everybody. It is Professor Parrish and we are on week four of English 122, if you can believe it. Wow, we are halfway through the semester with this week, which is crazy. Now, I know that it is the holiday weekend and so 4th of July is coming up. It's on a Tuesday this year, which is kind of weird, but I know that things are gonna be due over the weekend and you, like myself, probably have plans. So my first thing to tell you all is please don't wait to the last minute to do your assignments for this class because I know how it goes. You'll be like, oh yeah, Sunday I'll totally get it done. And then you'll wanna go and like see fireworks and do things like that. And you'll be like, oh, why do I have to do this stuff for English? So I would get this stuff done this week and that way you don't have to worry about it. So we're gonna talk about week four and week four has, we're gonna go through the module guide, talk about the reading response, paper two that is due as well as the discussion form of the poetry exam. Now we've kind of like flown through poetry, but the reason for that is, is that we don't spend a lot of time on poetry or, or technically on theater drama because I wanted to get us into the research paper. So looking at our module guide, um, the readings for this week are all very short. They're just a couple pages each um, talking about song because technically lyrics for songs are poems. Uh, talking about sound and rhythm, something I have none of. <laughs> I am like the least rhythmic person possible. Like when I coach speech, I can't keep a beat when I clap. So that's always fun. Um, but rhythm and sound do play a part in spoken word poetry, which we'll see here shortly, as well as in constructing songs and things like that. There's also closed form which versus open form. And that's kind of a difference in closed form usually has like a specific pattern to it, a rhythm, it has a convention. Open form poetry sometimes doesn't even look like poetry. Sometimes it looks like a paragraph and you're like, this is weird. But the difference is that closed form typically follows some type of convention with poetry, whereas open form does not. Open form is very free. You can do whatever you want with it. It's, it's a lot different. So I'm not really an open form person myself. I like having some conventions to work with when I write poetry, but I know some people really like it. They like that freedom. So it's kind of apples and oranges, pick whatever you're most comfortable with. And then we've talked about symbol in fiction, but now page 902 goes over symbolism in poetry. There's the concept of myth, a lot of mythos or Greek mythology, Roman mythology is applied into poetry itself. And then the idea of poetry and personal identity, looking at how poetry helps us to express who we are. A lot of people that write poetry do it to express their identity or conflicts or crises they find with their identity. And they don't really have a space to talk about a narrative or it might be something very personal that they don't want to put in narrative form like for a short story. So poetry is a nice way for these individuals to express themselves, express the conflict or situation they're dealing with, but not have to explain too much. If that makes sense, just like with writing fiction, poetry writing is often therapeutic. It's often a way for people to get out their emotions without having to necessarily go into detail, if that makes sense. So that is the module guide. Um, first talk about the reading response. Very similar to what we did last week. It's talking about picking out poems, comparing and contrasting them, telling what terminology best fits those poems, except now you're looking at chapters 21 through 28, the last set of chapters that you were supposed to do readings on for this week. So if you, if you did reading response number three, this is gonna be very, very similar, but I just want to see that you can talk about these poems that you can discuss them, apply terminology to them. And that also will help you to remember the terminology when you get to the poetry quiz, which is the next thing that I wanna talk about. Um, the poetry exam itself is 25 points. Um, like the fiction exam, you can only turn it in once. You don't get to go back or if you, if you click that submit button, you better make sure you got all the questions answered because you don't get to go back. Um, and I don't reopen the quizzes because they're really short and you should preview and make sure that everything's answered. But just to let you know, there's gonna be a matching section. There's gonna be some sections here where you explain your answers and that's pretty much it. There's only four questions on this poetry exam. It's very, very simple, but the questions are going to ask you for specifics. Like question three says, there are three types of imagery. Explain what they are and give an example of each. I have so many students that forget this and give an example and they lose half the points because they forgot to give an example. So make sure that you do that, right? Like question two says, define 
and give an example of alliteration and onomatopoeia. So though that's the poetry exam, it should be very, 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 very simple, <laughs> but it may take you a little bit longer than just five minutes, right? Um, the poetry paper is due this Sunday. Like with your fiction paper, if you do not have it complete, go ahead and turn it in. Um, you do get a chance to revise it like you do your fiction paper. You will get a chance to revise it. Just email me the revisions after I've graded it and gave you feedback. The fiction papers were really, really well done. I really liked everybody's fiction papers. I think for the most part, the only critiques I had were some people didn't make the three pages they were supposed to at minimum. Um, some had some very simple comma or simple grammatical punctuation errors, but those are all simple things that you can always double check. And if you want to, you can always email your paper to our English tutor, uh, Miss Joanna Lane, at Joanna, J-O-A-N-N-A dot Lane, L-A-N-E, at SIC.edu. She would love to read your papers, give you some feedback, and that way if you do it early this week, you might be able to get those papers back before the weekend, make those adjustments, and turn your paper in on time. But um, this paper is going to be due Sunday. Please make sure whatever you do, turn something in. You will get some credit for turning something in rather than a big old goose egg and no chance for revision. So make sure that you do that. And everybody did that this time, which I was really happy about. These papers are worth 100 points. They will drastically impact your grade for better or for worse. So make sure you don't forget them. So that leaves our discussion forum for this week, which I'm really, really excited about. Um, this is kind of similar to last week's where we have different types of poetry, except this week we're going to talk about slam poetry. If you've never heard of slam poetry, it is a very distinct genre, and slam poetry is meant to be performed in front of a live audience. It has a specific criteria of beats, it has a specific criteria where it almost begs for audience interaction. That's kind of what makes it cool, is that it wants the audience to kind of almost listen and participate as it's said. So. I do have this website right here, Digital Poet. Um, you're going to kind of do like what you did last week where you're choosing from a, a poem from a category and listening to it. If there's not an audio file, you just read it out loud. I did want to note, with this site specifically, there are some mature themes. I know we have some dual credit high school students in this class. Just so you all know, we're treating you all as adults in this college class. There are some divisions in this site that have poems that are very mature and may have language or mature themes. So just be careful as you're navigating. So the website itself looks like this and you'll notice that there are specific poems. If you click the drug poems, you're going to get some probably mature themes. Same with social issues with love. Um, story poems are probably going to be your simple bet <laughs> if you're trying to stay away from those. Um, and then short poems, you can also click on those. So. Like jazz, for instance. You can read this one that's called jazz. It seems pretty, pretty uh, safe. <laughs> but you can read that one too. So that's just the idea is picking out a category like love poems, picking out specific ones here, like a Christmas love poem. This one's open form, so that's kind of cool, right? That's really cool. I like that we get an open form. You scroll on down. We got some in here. Yeah, pretty nice, right? So yes, you guys can go through there and kind of see what poem you like. And then in the discussion forum, um, I want to talk, I want you to tell me what category you picked, what poem did you choose and why, how do you envision your audience participating when the poem is read out loud, um, how do you imagine they will react to this poem. And then based on last week's dis discussion, do you notice a difference in slam poetry versus other poetry that's spoken out loud. And if you don't know a difference, just explain that. Be like, oh, I really don't see a difference. Um, they both are kind of like this and explain it there. But so far, everybody has been really, really good with the discussion forums. Um, the only thing I've made notes on is if people had some grammar errors, like they weren't capitalizing their eyes or something simple. But so far, the responses and posts have been really, really good. And I've really enjoyed them. So you all should have feedback at this point with paper one. Um, like I said, if you do make revisions to paper one, you can just email me those revisions. Um, you can do it through Falcon Mail or through Canvas. Either one works. But I'm really excited, y'all, to see your poetry papers uh, next week, if you notice. We'll talk about this next week. Next week is going to be just a week for theater. So you're going to have to do not only your thesis and outline, but your theater paper in a week. It's gonna be a little bit different. So if you're someone 
that gets done with your stuff early this week and you need time to think about your drama paper, you might want to go ahead and check out the thesis and outline assignment for paper three. We don't spend a lot of time on theater and drama in this class because one, we have so many other theater classes you can take. You can take intro to drama, you can take in theater appreciation, you can take acting classes, you can take dance classes. There's, there's so much you can do. You can do stagecraft, makeup, things like that. There's a lot of theater courses we offer at SIC, so I don't spend a lot of time on drama because you'll have the chance to take classes about it outside this class, but I also want to give you a lot of time on your research paper, so that's kind of the sacrifice that we have to make. We sacrifice spending one week on this short paper for three pages versus having an extra week for the longer paper, so that's the goal behind it. But in any case, we'll talk about that next week, but I just wanted to give you a heads up if you want to go ahead and read the paper guidelines that are right here for paper three, go ahead and do that to kind of get some ideas brewing as you prep for that. But I'll have the lecture video out next week for uh, week five and we'll talk about it then. But in the meantime, I hope you all have a wonderful week. Please stay safe, take care, and I'll be back very soon to talk about week five of English 122. Bye.